Greetings, family of overcomers. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Truly, it's a good day. It's a blessed day. And it is truly a gift from God. We greet you in the matchless price in the name of our Lord and Savior on this Sunday morning. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, we thank you for your word now. We need to hear from you. And God, we pray that the word will speak with clarity. That the word will speak with understanding. That lives will be blessed. And God, we pray that somebody will make the best decision that they can make in their life. And that is to get to know you. That is to connect with the church. To have a covering. To be what you would want them to be. We thank you. That it is already done. In Jesus name. I believe today that there's a word for us in the 14th chapter of Job. Job 14. Start around verse 7 and go to verse 9. It reads this way. For there is hope of a tree if it be cut down. Then it will sprout again and that the tender branches thereof will not cease. Though the root thereof wax old in the earth and the stalk thereof die in the ground, yet through the scent of water it will bud and bring forth burrows like a plant. There is hope of a tree. I believe there's a word there today. I want to talk about that today. I want to talk about setbacks. Because in this season that we're in, setbacks are inevitable. They are bound to happen. They are bound to show up in every facet of your life, even when you're doing your best, beloved. A setback can steal your joy. A setback can catch you off guard and cause people to distance themselves and even literally count you But you must understand that even though setbacks are painful, and they are, they are also confusing. However, setbacks provide us with substance, substance that we need to succeed. If you miss the substance, then uh, you will just be spinning your tires, your wheels in the mud. A setback may be a confusing moment, but if the truth be told, it really has a lot of divine clarity tied to it. You see, God never allows a thing to happen in our lives without there being a purpose tied to it. So even though there is a setback in your life that's devastating, by you tuning in today, by you listening today, I believe that there's a word that God has for you today because God wants to speak to you about being counted out. 
We all have times and times in our life when we are in those, uh, we experience private moments of tension, uh, private moments of strain and stress and mess, and there are those moments when they become public, and it's, it's interesting when it becomes public because it's, it, it, it shows and it opens up the door to how others observe and look at your situation. You do know that people will stand back and try to provide a diagnosis of your situation. As well as some will try to provide some prognosis of your situation. You know, they will look at you and they will say, is this or is that as a result of what is going on in your life? People will jump to the conclusion and come up with unwanted advice. I, I have a philosophy that, 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 that bad advice is easy because it's free. Good advice is hard to come by because you got to get in the word to get that. And, and people will come up, they will chime in with their own interesting uh, 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 two cents. And, and, and they say, you know, uh, if it was me, mm, but you know, it's not you. See, see, you're looking at your situation just like Brother Job. Hmm. It's an interesting word here today. Because Job's own bride told him to curse God and die. People chime in with their two cents with the objection of counting you out. <laughs> All of us remember the things we've gone through as some of you are going through things right now where people may be shaking their heads saying, I don't know if you're going to bounce back from this. I'm not sure if you're going to recover from that. But understand something, that even if people don't see anything salvageable inside of you, God, oh God, I thank you. God has already factored all that you are going through into the equation. There is something salvageable. There is something God wants to use you to do. Mm. So, so you will survive this season. Why? Glad you asked. You asked good question. Because God has given you an anointing of Adaptation. Ah, don't miss that. Don't miss that. God has adapted you to the situation. God has adapted you to the circumstance. God has adapted you to the season and is anointing of that adaptation for this season. You will survive. Oh, God, I think. In fact, in fact, you ought to lay hands on yourself right now. Mm. And you ought to say, I will survive. Mm. <laughs> That's it. Declare it with me. I will survive. That's it. Say, say it again. Say it again. I will survive this season. See, there needs to be a memo to everyone and everything that's trying to count you out. That's trying to dismiss you, trying to destroy you, to let them know you're still standing after all this. You're still standing after all you've been through. You're still thriving after all the medical challenges. You're still thriving after the job situation. You're still thriving after all the attacks that you had to go through. <laughs> You're still pushing forward. You're still going forward. You're still trying to go up the King's Highway because as a child of God, it does not matter what it looks like because it ain't over until God says it's over. <laughs> as long, oh God, I thank it. As long as God is still on the throne, there is a possibility. There is always a chance of my situation getting better. <laughs> yeah, that, that's your testimony. And when they begin to count you out, God is still moving in your situation. God is still moving behind the scenes. God is still moving behind the curtain. God is still moving in your circumstances because of your situation. Mm. This story from the book of Job, which is the oldest book in the Bible. It's found in the section of writings in the Hebrew Bible called the Tanakh. Okay? Uh, it's, it's the first of many poetic writings and books in the Hebrew Bible of the Old Testament. And, and though it is not canonized as the, as the first book, but it's the oldest 
book. Stay with me, somebody. I'm going somewhere. What makes the book so fascinating is that we get a view of evil and divine. You missed that. I'm going to that. We get a sense of God and the devil having a conversation about Job. And Job's not just anybody. Job is righteous. But this conversation, unbeknown to him, uh, between the devil and God, and this kind of cosmic, cosmic war that happens between Satan and God is about man. Uh, you missed it. <laughs> it, 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 it. It's not about politics. It's not about the virus. It's not about the pandemic. But the conversation is between God and Satan about man. You know the story of Job. Satan, where have you been? <laughs> I've been going up and down. I've been going to and fro. Just looking for somebody, anybody. And God says, well... Have you considered my servant Job? Yeah, I thought about him. But check this. The problem with him is G-O-D, you hooked him up. You got a hedge around him. But I'll tell you one thing. If you move it, I promise you, I promise you that he will cuss you to your face. The only reason he loving you like he loving you is because you blessed him. But if you allow me one opportunity to go in and attack his life, I guarantee that Job will curse you to your face. Mm. God allowed it to occur. God allowed Satan to go in and attack Job. And Job, it, it was a systematic attack. Who, who am I talking to? Is there a Job? Is there, is there a Job behind that light today? Is there a Job in your house? Is there a Job in your kitchen looking on this thing at your phone? All of Job's life, it was an attack on his life to discover, Job, you can adapt, there it is, to what your circumstances will be. We, we, we know the story all about Job. Job. He lost his family. He lost his cattle. He lost his money. He lost his livelihood. He, he was sick and bored. He lost all he had. Hmm. So then we get this idea in the 14th chapter of Job that Job looks at his situation and he compares himself metaphorically to a tree. Ah, oh, you missed that. <laughs> Job says there is hope of a tree <laughs> Woo. that if the tree be cut down it will sprout again mm. I, I need to let you know something today that all of us are all of us are like trees that have been cut down Job refers to himself as a tree <laughs> All of us mm, are like trees that have been cut down. Job refers to himself as a tree that's been cut down like some of you. You ever been where you felt like that? Where you felt like you've been cut down? Mm -hmm. You felt like uh, you everything around you was going bad? Job said, but don't worry because it will sprout again. Now, now this is not the first time that we see in scripture something about trees. Psalms chapter 1 verse 3 says he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth its fruit in its season. Jeremiah 17 8 says he shall be like a tree planted by the water which spreads out its root. Isaiah 61 3 says that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planning of the Lord. <laughs> you see, <laughs> there are some things that you need to remember about a tree. Tree, you missed that. <laughs> it's just making sense. There is some things that you need to remember about a tree. Tree, 
You must accept the fact that you stand out. God, thank you. Woo. Face it. You got to understand. You're not like everybody else. <laughs> You're a tree. <laughs> You're not a shrub. You're not a hedge. You're not a bush. Just own it. That you're a tree and you stand above the crowd. You spend hours trying to figure out why folks don't like you. Why they tripping. Hmm. Hey, uh, all you've done is show up. And sometimes when you show up with your tree self <laughs> and your treeness, it often brings out the insecurity of their hedgeness. You missed that. I'm going too fast. Listen, 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 listen. I'm not going to allow your hedgeness to affect my treeness because I own the fact that I stand out. I own the fact that I'm different. I own the fact that I'm a child of Jesus. See, if you ever study trees, you need to understand something about trees. And that is it. Number one, trees produce. That means that, that they provide nourishment for insects. Uh, they provide nourishments for birds. Uh, uh, trees produce fruit, as you know. They produce. Did, did you know that folk a lot of times are tripping because you always producing? Rather than complain, you produce. But not, not only do they just produce, you know, understand something else. Their trees make things better around them. <laughs> <laughs> you plant a tree and things get better. <laughs> the whole atmosphere changes. People come and sit on a tree and have a picnic. People get on a tree to get out of the sun for the shade that the tree provides. Mm. But not only that, not only will they, they make things better around you, any real estate person will tell you that trees increase the property value of a home. Mm. Mm. Mm, see, see, talk to them, see, and they'll tell you that, that they make a house more valuable. <laughs> they give it curb appeal. And some of you need to understand this one. That when you show up on the job, when you show up in the situation, when you show up in the circumstances, you brought the value up. And that's why the enemy is so intimidated by you because this. The, the, it's intimidating, the enemy is because the greatness on you makes you a target of the enemy. Let me say that again. The greatness on you makes you a target of the enemy. The fact that you showed up with favor of God and, and the intentionality on your life, with the anointing on your life, you absolutely become a target of the enemy. The enemy will cut you down. The enemy will chop you down. And, and, and listen, listen. I mean, that's tell the truth. It's no fun being chopped in. The matter is, it does not matter how strong you are. If it ain't one thing, it's another. If it ain't one conspiracy, then it's another lie. If it ain't one thing, it's another attack. If it's not one thing, then it is another. But listen, that's just par for the course. Second Timothy three twelve puts it this way: Yes. And all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Oh, God, I thank you. Anybody with greatness on them is definitely on the devil's hit list. You wonder why he's tripping with you? David will tell you, I was on the enemy's hit list. I was anointed and Saul was trying to take me out. Peter will tell you, he found himself in prison. Mm. Ooh. Ooh, and, that's right. and when you are anointed, you're a tree and you're a target. Jesus, there, that's a good one right there. Jesus himself became a target of the Sadducees and the Pharisees. Then look at Paul, put in prison, shipwrecked, a target of the enemy. James of the early church, believe it. He, he said, listen, listen, my brother, listen, my brother, count it all joy. Not if, but when <laughs> you fall into diverse temptation. Why? Because you're going to be a target. Mm. If I'm going to be a target, then I've got to accept the fact that everybody's just not going to like me. 
Now, now, don't, don't let nobody make you feel bad about being the tree that you are. Let me say that again. Don't let anybody make you feel bad about being the tree that you are. Why? Hmm. Because trees understand trees. <laughs> Y'all didn't get it. Trees understand trees. See, see, no matter how bad it gets, never lose hope that it will get better. <laughs> Let me say it again. No matter how bad it gets, never lose hope that it will get better. Jobs lost, and from the outside, it appears that you should concede and have a, ooh, God, have a pity party. But the enemy didn't know that it's a miscalculation of the enemy because the enemy thinks that you're some and total of who you are is on the outside. <laughs> Yet Job understands that a tree gets cut down <laughs> like a child of God, but never lose hope. Why? Because there is hope in a tree. When you lose hope, mm, God, thank you, you're on the edge. Hope is an ingredient of faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. Hope keeps me jumping. Hope is what keeps me going. Hope is what keeps me fighting when everything else says give in. Everything else says give up. Everything else says go in the towel. Everything else says it's over. But my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteous. Oh, God. Thank you. See, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Hear me, somebody. You must keep your head when you're going through hell. Woo. You must keep your head when you're going through hell. When you experience difficulties, when you experience difficult situations as a child of God, it's important to understand that the enemy is going to manipulate your mind. Stay with me, somebody. The enemy is going to manipulate your mind. The attacks always begin in the mind. The attacks of the enemy are always in the mind. Because the enemy's attacks are designed to get you to tap out. Get you to say, uncle. Get you to say, I give. It's designed to get you to tap out. Why? Because he didn't have the power to take you out. Oh, God. <laughs> Ooh, God said, you can do anything you want to do with me, with Job. You can do anything you want to do with Job. But don't touch his life. Because it belongs to me. <laughs> and sometimes, whoo, the enemy will push you to the brink, but he does not have that type of authority. See, see, don't, 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 don't push me because I'm close to the edge trying not to lose my head. Make me wonder why I keep from going under. You've been there, hmm, like Hannah in First Samuel. First chapter, with Pinnock, with all the drama in the house, head game, like Elijah, when he was in a cave and he said, Lord, just kill me. It was a head game. Like Jeremiah, when he said, Lord, you tricked me with your word. And he came with a vision to me. It was like a head game. See, the enemy, the enemy, as we see with Job, will attack you economically. The enemy, will attack you physiologically. The enemy will attack you domestically, sociology, theologically, and ultimately the goal of the enemy is to attack you psychologically. 
Job was at a bad place. He was at a bad spot in his life. He was in turmoil. He had boils all over his body. And, and, and the boils were, were, were beginning to open up and, and the pus was oozing out and the insect was on the boils eating at it all over his body. Mm. Everything you love, Job, has been taken from you. And there will always be those. Mm. Ooh, God, I thank you. There will always be those. <laughs> Let me say it again. There will always be those, John, who are asking why do bad things keep happening to good people? Here's a man. That the insects were eating the balls on his body. And he prayed every day for his children. He talked to God. He loved God. He stayed away from evil. God, I thank you. Did nothing wrong. And yet, Here is his condition, his agony, his torment. His wife said, curse God and die. When the spirits were wrong, they said, Job, I don't mean no harm, Doc. Look at, look at, you're in a bad situation. You, you, you had to have done something wrong. They counted him out. They dismissed him. But it's Job himself who ripped his mantle, shaved his head, put on sackcloth, and worshiped God and declared, naked I came into the world, and naked I shall return. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Woo! What is it about Job? Whatever it is about Job, it's the same about you. Declare that no matter how bad it gets in your life, you're still going to hold your head up. You're still going to give God glory. Why? Because your current situation will not be your final destination. Your current situation, that's today, will not be your final destination. I, I may be cut down, whoo, but I ain't going out like that. I need somebody to declare I may be cut down, but I'm not going out like that. See, you got to have some bounce back inside of you. Ooh, as, as a child of God, you got to look beyond what's happening to you right now. You, you got to see yourself in the future. You got to see yourself in tomorrow morning. You got to see yourself in Monday morning on Sunday. You can't allow yourself to get stuck in the Mari clay and go back and forth with the enemy. But let me say this. There is hope, oh God, I thank you, of a tree. I, 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 don't, I don't care if, if, if it's been cut down. There's something inside of a tree that's going to come back. I don't care what it looks like. You just hang in there. Oh, oh you're going to bounce back from a stub. You're going to bounce back from a stump. That tree is going to come back. I don't care how it looks. I want the world to know I'm coming back. Oh, God, I've come to the club of somebody's life today. Your money is coming back. Your job is coming back. Your child is coming back. Your family is coming back. Your health is coming back. Who am I talking to? There is hope in the tree. If it be cut down, it will spread again. But I tell you this. Your resilience is in your roots. <laughs> oh God, I thank you. Your resilience is in your roots. Some people wonder when they see you, a tree coming out of a stump. People looking at you like, how are you going to just come back from all that? You don't understand. I tell you how, it's my roots. Oh God. Job says in verse 8, though its roots may grow old in the earth, some folk don't know that your survival all these years 
that your survival the last few months, that your survival since March, your survival since the pandemic came, your survival since COVID-19 came on the shore of the United States, America, that your survival, God, is in your roots. Woo, God, I thank you. It's tied to one thing. Your value is not in what is seen, but it's in what is unseen. The Bible says, wax old in the earth's roots. You're not a person that gets caught up in what is seen. Some people uh, uh, value is tied to what's above. What do you mean, Pastor? Well, uh, that's not your reality. See, my reality is the stuff you can't see. See, my reality that makes me who I am is not the car that I drive. My reality that makes me who I am is not the clothes that I wear. The reality that uh, my reality is not the house that I live in. No, no, no. But, but what makes me who I am is the stuff that's underneath. The stuff that's underground. It's my roots. It's my prayer life. It's my, when you begin to realize the essence of who you are, then it makes sense because now you are with your true self with all those deep roots that make you who you are. People who cannot control you will have the biggest difficulty with you. Let me say that again. People who cannot control you will have the biggest difficulty with you. When you're a tree, you're designed to be by the rivers of waters. You don't take a tree and put it in a pot. <laughs> you missed that. See, if you put a tree in a pot, the roots will be constrained. And if the roots are strong enough, they will break through and begin to walk and push the pot. And the only way you can get the tree out of the pot that you shouldn't have put it in in the first place is you will have to crack open the pot to get the tree out of the pot because the tree mm, was never designed to be put in a pot because when you put the tree in the pot the tree will be constrained the tree will be contained the tree will be limited to what it can do because the tree was never designed to be put in a pot it's something that's going to contain you. It's something that's going to control you. Let me give you something this morning. Listen, listen, listen. Don't pot me. Because if you pot me, I can't grow. If you pot me, I'm constrained. If you pot me, I'm controlled. Don't pot me. Because once you crack the pot to get the tree out, because the roots have been constrained, Mm. <laughs> See, I'm a tree and my roots run deep and that's why your depth determines your destiny. Let me say it again. Your depth determines your destiny. When you look at what some people have to go through in life, you begin to realize the reason you've been able to survive. Job says if the roots wax old in earth. So Job, how do you how do you still make it? How, how are you still standing? You're standing because of the root system. Hmm. In a season like this, God, I thank you. If you don't have any roots, ooh, child of God, you will lose your mind. Because if you don't have roots, the people that's going to make it in the season are people who have some roots. How do you know the difference? <laughs> by the storm. <laughs> you missed it. You know the difference in the roots by the storm. When the storm comes, the trees, mm, they break on the ones that don't have a root system. Oh God. See, when your roots go down, and they stretch down and they wrap around a rock and they hold on. <laughs> you see, see, see my, my roots are wrapped around a rock. Mm. 
Not the age of rock, but the rock of ages. A rock named Jesus. Whew, God, the star made oh, mm, my, my, my favorite tree. Uh, my favorite tree. They don't have them around here. My favorite tree is a palm tree. God, I thank you. And the reason why my favorite tree is a palm tree is because there's two things great about a palm tree. Number one, it's visibility. Number two, it's stability. A palm tree is not as big as a, a red oak or, or you know, an oak tree or one of them big trees out in Washington State. No, 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 no. The base of it is pretty good size. But, but a palm tree is visible because it's way up high. And it's got its fruit way up in the top of it. But, but, but the palm tree is visible because of its fruit being way up high and it's a tall tree. But not only is it visible, it's stable. Not only does it have visibility, but it has stability. Because the palm tree has a different root system. God, I thank you. Because the roots in a palm tree, they go down down, down, deep. And then they turn and come back up through the earth. <laughs> and they get in the base of the tree and give it extra stability so that when the wind and the storm comes, it will sway and it will rock and it will just go back and forth. And, and it will even bend almost in half, but it won't break. <laughs> it will bend and, and, and listen, listen, since it's got its fruit up high, <laughs> see what the palm tree does is it talks to the storm. When it shake, go ahead, wind. Go ahead and blow. Oh, I, I'm with you. Go ahead. And then when it's over, it will pick it and it will stand up and it'll say, hey, y'all, I made it over. Hey, y'all, I made it out. I want to know are there any palm trees? Listen to me this morning. I'm still standing. I want to declare this over your life. And here's my final point. Your comeback will be greater than your setback. Hello, oh God, thank you. <laughs> Glory to God. Woo! <laughs> God, thank you. Your comeback will be greater than your setback. Mm. The Bible says the tree will come back. Job 42.10 
and the Lord restored Job's losses. When he prayed for his friends, indeed, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Ha! When Job prayed for his friends, <laughs> the Lord gave Job twice as much. You coming back. Ooh, God, I thank you. Your roots are going to sprout. You're going to grow. You're going to go deeper and deeper in your relationship with God. Your comeback will be greater than your setback. And maybe you're here this morning. And maybe you hear God saying to you that you need a relationship. Maybe you hear God saying today is the day. Oh yes, today is the day of salvation. And God says, I want to help you be all that I'm calling you to be. The Bible says you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised you from the dead. The Bible says thou shalt be saved. Hmm. I'm going to give you life today. I invite you to pray this prayer. Lord, I'm a sinner. But I thank you for dying on Calvary and rising from the grave. And today, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead. I receive you as Lord and Savior of my life. In your name I pray. Amen. Mm. Beloved, if you prayed that prayer, I want you to let me know. As pastor at New Hope hyphen dash cf dot org or maybe you're looking for a church home you can join the home you can join you need a covering during the pandemic you need a covering God I thank you during COVID-19 we're available mm. thank you Lord church family let me just thank you thank you for being vigilant Thank you for being faithful. Thank you for continuing to try and keep the church sustained and maintained during these uncertain times. Thank you for your giving, your tithes, and your offering. For standing on the wall. Hallelujah. Oh, I miss you. Empty in here. Lonely in here. But one day, hallelujah, one day, we will be back together because our comeback will be greater than our setback. Overcomes the love of you. Faith, hope, much love. Tune in next week. God bless you.